All right, what we're doing is we're going over our questions right here for our uh, before our quiz here. And so um, uh, things that you need to have out to help you with this. You need to have out your periodic table that's colored. Hopefully your periodic table is colored. Mine's not, but you hopefully have yours already colored. With the uh, oxidation numbers, you need that out. All right. You will also need out the polyatomic ion list. Okay, everybody. Your polyatomic ion, that's that little small sheet, especially on page 20 of your notebook. All right. These are the things that you're going to need out. All right. And it helps you do these and identify these correctly. Okay. All right. So we're doing our first one right here. Yes. Your what? I don't know if you got it yet. It doesn't mean I'll get it back to you in a little bit today. I'll try to give it to you while you're doing the quiz. Okay. All right. Anyways, um, so these are your name, these are the ones that we're doing here. All right. Uh, when we're naming compounds, the key thing is to know if they're ionic or if they are covalent. If, if they're ionic, do you use prefixes? No, you do not. If they're covalent. You do use prefixes, all right? So this first element, all right, is uh, right here. This has got, it's got sodium and oxygen. All right, I'm gonna have Matthew, if you'll help me with the first one. Is sodium a uh, metal or non-metal? All right, is sodium a metal or non-metal? I just I didn't just write and write a note that I don't have the picture on that. Okay. okay. All right. Hey, just but write it on this. Uh, remind me when you write it so I can or, and leave it blank. Okay. All right. So sodium is a what, Matthew? And oxygen is a uh so this is a what type of bond? Ionic or covalent? It is ionic. So do I use prefixes? You do not. So I just simply call this what? All right, sodium is right. And then oxygen, but then I take off the ending and add ide. So this is just called sodium oxide. Okay, so that's what this is called. The first one is called sodium oxide. No prefixes. I take off the ending at IDE. I don't use prefixes because that is only with covalent compounds. IDE is on every end of every compound. It's on the end of every compound, except for ones that are, have polyatomic ions. All right, this next one, carbon and two sulfurs. All right, carbon and two sulfurs. All right, here's carbon and here are two sulfurs. Let me get uh, someone to help with this here. David, carbon and two sulfurs. Is this ionic or is this covalent? All right, carbon is a non-metal and sulfur is a non-metal. So that makes it what? Covalent, will I use prefixes? All right, I will you use prefixes with covalent compounds. So I'm gonna call this carbon. It's actually how many carbons? It's one coal, one carbon, monocarbon. All right, and there's how many sulfurs? So it's called disulfide. Now remember if mono is on the first word, you take it off so it's just called carbon disulfide all right our next one k3n all right k3n tenaya k3n here's potassium right here uh and here's nitrogen uh which is right here what would that be ionic or covalent it is ionic so do i use prefixes all right, so I'm going to be calling this, what is this going to be called? It's an N, 
potassium, nitrogen, but I take off the ending, nitride, potassium, nitride, okay? That's what I do right there, okay? That's, that was an N, yeah. For which one? Oh, before the K, that's just a scratch out. <laughs> My bad. Who said that? My bad. All right. Um. <laughs> that was ionic. Yes. All right. Uh, the next one is KNO3. All right. Is this, let's ask uh, another one here. Piper, KNO3. Potassium is a what? All right. Nitrogen is a what? And oxygen is a. So, what would type of bond will this have? All right. It is actually going to be considered ionic, but it does have covalent bonds. It has ionic. Yeah, it's got the polyatomic and it's got the uh, and the metal here. It's got a metal and as uh, ionic and covalent bonds. But we're going to treat it as which one, Piper? You treat it as ionic. All right. So do I use prefixes if, since I treat it as if it's ionic? All right. If it has both, you treat it as ionic. So I, I'm going to call this potassium. And what's the name of this polyatomic ion? Piper, what's the name of this polyatomic ion? No, it, it the, the polyatomic ions on here, All right? Yeah, so this is just called potassium nitrate. Okay. All right, and so that's how we do that. If they have, if it has both, it typically has one of these as a polyatomic ion. If it has both, it typically has one of those. All right. Next thing, how do I write this formula? All right, help us out with the formula, Alyssa. All right, um, what's the symbol for calcium? Mm -hmm. What's the symbol for fluorine? Mm -hmm. What's the charge for them? When we look at the charges on the, this the oxidation number. What's the oxidation number for uh, calcium? Positive how much? So positive two. And what's the oxidation number for fluorine? All right, now there are two ways we can do this, okay? Which way do you prefer to do it? To find the least common multiple or to cross over? All right, so what number do two and one both multiply to get to? Two. So what number times two equals two? One. And what number times one equals two? Two. So my formula is just CAF. Two. And if there's no number by it, that's assumed to be how many atoms? One. All right. Uh, and this number up here, this is the, the oxidation number. What does the oxidation number tell? It's the charge, the most common charge for that atom. It's the most common charge for that atom. That's what it tells. All right. So that's the oxidation number. It tells the most common charge. Let's take our quiz. All right. Any questions?